And our final uh, speaker of this session is uh, Raj Rajaram, uh, who's going to share with us about uh, technology transfer opportunities and climate change. Raj? Thank you, Peter. And we have had a very, very exciting morning. The things I learned just churned my head. I said, I can be doing so much more. We all can be doing so much more. But for that, we all have to work together. We have to have the mindset that suffering of every human being is our suffering. And so the broad theme I see through all this is somewhat of a selfless attitude that unless I think of the bigger picture and be somewhat selfless instead of thinking of my selfish short-term objectives, we will ruin the planet. So I strongly believe that technology transfer is the engine for global growth and for combating climate change. Humans are curious around the world. We saw Dr. Malali saying, you know, farmers are impacting tremendous improvements. All we need is to give them the opportunity and tell them how to get it done. That's technology transfer at the lowest level. But Dr. Malali goes and tells them, hey, you've been living here. You've seen the changes going on. You want to improve it? They say, yeah. So he tells them how to plant the trees, how to get this thing back to where it was before so they can have a better life. So we are doing technology to reduce the cost of solar, wind. We're using biomimicry to understand what nature does and how we incorporate that and how we convert our technologies to benefit humans. And the latest technology that is very, very popular in the US and which I hope will take over in the rest of the world is using biomass, which we have plenty of around the world. You go to rural India, there's biomass everywhere. And today's headlines, you must have read, that biomass left after agriculture is being burned in northern Indian states. And that is creating an emergency air problem. Aditya showed us pictures of people in wearing masks trying to navigate around the city. Schools have been shut down till November 5th in Delhi because of this. Is this the way to live? No. So we have, and this is a technology, to convert this biomass into biofuels and into biochar, which is a very wonderful product which can be applied on the land and increase water absorption in the land, increase productivity of the land, to grow more forests like Dr. Malari Gaudia was saying. So these are the technologies that are available right now if we transfer it properly. And fortunately with the Illinois Tech law degree I got, I had the courage to open a joint venture company in Delhi where our main focus was technology transfer in the areas of landfill management where leaking landfills we are polluting, are polluting the groundwater all over India. So we got many industries to adopt the latest EPA technology for landfill liner design so that they don't pollute the groundwater and hurt a lot of innocent people downstream who have no clue what's happening, but they're drinking contaminated water and dying. So that was a great opportunity for me. And the US government, I was so proud when they started the Clean Technology Initiative in India in the late 90s. And the company I had opened here called Tetratech India was fortunate to win a $3.2 million project over a period of three years. And through th those $3.2 million changed the face of 10 industrial sectors in India, where we taught people how to be aware of what they are doing to the environment by some of their industrial processes. We came up with an environmental management appraisal system. And when we showed people that you can do things better to improve their environment as well as your bottom line, they just grabbed it. And now many, many industry sectors have 
adopted it, and Niranjan Katri was part of our project for that. Uh, one of my friends, Satyush Malik, who helped me grow this company, Rhetoric India, is here. So these are the things that technology transfer can do, done wisely, with a little bit of money, create a maximum impact. And that's what we need to do more and more. So what my talk I'm going to focus on is what areas where technology transfer is most important for us right now. So we need water management technologies. Niranjan Katri has amply told us that. We need energy management technologies. Bhartendu Sinha and others spoke about that. Renewable energy technologies. That is constantly evolving. And we need those technologies as they're developed in any part of the world to be transferred to all parts of the world so that all people benefit. We need waste to energy technologies. Building design management technologies. Food production, transport, and waste minimization and community involvement, like Dr. Malali Gowda has done in, in the villages where he, was, where he comes from. Water management, water use efficiency. Niranjan Katri has spoken amply about it, so I don't want to go more, but very, very simple things, like just being aware of what is happening. Every time we use a flush, so much water goes. What happens to it? And then we have to treat it. It takes a lot of energy. And so these are the kinds of things we have to understand. There are many innovative technologies, but for people to implement it, they have to be just led along the way, and policy changes have to be made. And that is the only way these kinds of technologies will be implemented and will save the world. Recycling technologies for gray water and black water. I did a project in Hammond, Indiana, where we took 38 million gallons of treated wastewater a day, which was going into Lake Michigan and creating huge algal blooms, and further along the Mississippi River to the Gulf of Mexico, creating algal blooms and fish dying. So we said, why not we give this treated wastewater having high level of nitrates? So dumping into Lake Michigan, giving it to the farmers in Indiana, which were only 10 miles away. So we have come up with a solution, but the policy is not there. Policy is there in the Chesapeake Basin on the East Coast, but not in the Midwest, where the government gives an incentive to not put nitrates into the water. If we had that incentive, the Tech Hammond project would have been constructed right now, but the design is sitting in a Hammond office of the water uh, sanitary district there. So these are the things that are available, but have not been implemented because either policy change has not been happened or people are just not fully aware. And this can happen not only in Hammond, Indiana, but all around the world. Rainwater harvesting, this should be mandatory. I just finished a project a couple of years ago at the University of Illinois, Chicago campus, where we came up with simple technologies which are available today to reduce their water usage by 50%. And they had a big goal for 2050 to not take additional water from the municipality and not put additional wastewater to burden the already uh, very, very expensive wastewater management treatment system in Chicago, where we have the largest uh, wastewater treatment plant treating 1.2 billion gallons of water a day. And if we can do this, green technologies to make the rainwater sink into the ground and become a resource for future use and not let it run off and into the sewage system where it has spent tremendous amounts of energy to again treat it and recycle it for reuse. Water pollution control technologies. In India, I've been working on water issues since the mid 90s. And when I see open sewage going into to a very, very big river called the Ganges, which most of Indians consider it a very, very holy river. But we put our sewage there. This is not acceptable. There are technologies available right today. We can implement it. But hopefully, the current government is doing a lot of stuff like that. But we have to do this, and the technology transfer has to happen from where it has been developed to the end user. And that's where a lot of effort is needed. Energy management. Our buildings take up about 30, 35 percent 
of the energy. If we can improve, like Niranjan Katri was saying, you know, why keep it so cool? And in all these things, before I talk to people, I implement it. I put in solar in my house, the second house in my village of Oak Brook, where I installed solar. So 95%, 90 to 95% of my energy comes from solar. And minimize water use. Since the water rates went up, every time I water my lawn, I'm very, very cognizant. I'm using water that is a scarce resource. And I have spot water meters, so I know every 15 minutes what water usage is happening. So I have cut down my water usage. So these are things that we can be doing energy efficiency. There's a Bureau of Energy Efficiency in India. They are tremendously promoting this. But all this technology has to get to the individual homeowner through public service announcements, through economic incentives. Only things that works with humans is economic incentives. You raise the price of energy to such a level, then they are very, very keen on saving it and conserving it. So these are the kinds of things on a big scale the government has to do along with technology transfer. Renewable energy, this is where uh, with the Paris Agreement, there is a tremendous movement around the world. Technology of solar has come down significantly. A lot of Chinese companies that have brought down the cost of solar panels are investing heavily in India, and the government is giving the right incentives with 30% uh, credit and other incentives to maximize use of renewable energy. And India was one of the few countries that very early on recognized this has to be done. So they created the Ministry of New and Renewable Energies. And they have come up with so many wonderful technologies for converting our municipal waste into energy, which US can benefit from, the rest of the world can benefit from. But this has to be actually broadcast and get to the people who can use it. So all these technologies are available and we can use it right now. Biofuels, this is an area where tremendous work is going on around the world. Where instead of using corn, which can feed the world, we don't have to use that to create ethanol. We can use ordinary biomass. And there are technologies being developed at University of Wisconsin, Berkeley, California, to convert any kind of biomass into biofuels. And now many, many airlines are using biofuels for 80% of their usage during the year. So this has to be accelerated because we cannot afford to keep on pumping fossil fuels from the ground and deplete them while you know, worsening climate change. So this is something with a technology developed in the US can be transferred here very expeditiously and vice versa. Waste to energy. Waste to energy technologies are so many I've seen in India. Many are being implemented. For example, India passed a law in 2000 saying no organic waste shall go into any landfill. And like Niranjan said, in 10 years, industry got adjusted to that and now all the organic waste is converted either into biogas, compost, or into biofuels. That is happening. It takes a policy and some time for industry to adjust and technologies to be available, transferred. And many US companies have come here for doing this transfer of waste to energy uh, technologies. Building design and management. This is where we came up, the US came up with a uh, leadership in energy and environmental design. And by giving incentives, or well, you get a platinum rating, you get a gold rating, you get a bronze rating. People use that now. There are simple, simple technologies to save energy, save water, and just b reduce the carbon footprint of buildings. That is happening, and the hometown of Hyderabad, where I originally come from, has got a model building designed by the Confederation of Indian Industry. It's got the platinum lead rating. That is saving energy, saving water, and using everything environmentally possible to be done. Food production distribution. 
The one topic that is getting a lot of attention worldwide is food, energy, water nexus. And US is spending millions of dollars in that. And in this area, Israel government is doing some cutting edge work, which has to be replicated around the world. They know with sensors what a plant needs, how much water, when. And they give the plant water only when needed, instead of flooding the land with more water than needed and wasting the water. So this, and energy, if you sometimes farmers all over India are using big bore well pumps. They go to 1,000 feet, keep pumping. But they never think of the energy involved because they're getting free energy from the government. This is unacceptable. So this food energy nexus, water nexus, has to be fully understood. And technology is wherever available. And the last three, four, five years, I've been monitoring uh, Israeli technologies in this area. They are tremendous, from drip irrigation to sensors to monitor the water required by plants and giving them only that. They have saved water. They have converted the arid Negev desert into a blooming area, and they supply food to the neighboring countries. So technology transfer again is needed in the area of food waste minimization. This, when people are going hungry, when this inequality of people is happening, how can we afford to waste 50% of the food? Because we grow excess, we don't store it properly, we don't distribute it at the right time, so we waste so much. And have a gradual way of recovering your investment that you've made to develop this technology, not asking for money up front. So these kinds of policies have to change. People have to think, yeah, I work hard to come up with an innovation, but how do I recover? my costs over a period of time instead of taking it quick and running and not getting the technology implemented. So as a society, we have a lot and a lot of things to do. Technology, we talk about it, but unless technology reaches the people at the grassroots level, we will not benefit the people. So that's my humble plea. You've heard lots of great talks. Let us all just make a pledge here to work together across national boundaries, across class boundaries, across any other boundaries we create, our humans create artificially to create a holistic environment where we'll survive the climate change that's coming and we will try to create a less unequal society. Thank you.